how has the India market shaped up over the last two and a half years for you? Well, India is such a great place to visit. I mean, love the people, love the culture, love the food, and I can't wait to come back and visit you in India. Um, so India today, 600, meeple, uh, 600 million people have smartphones out of a billion, and we're seeing about 25 million added per quarter. Our goal, and I think the India's goal, should be make sure everybody has access to the internet and, and to a smartphone. So that's progressing. Hopefully it progresses faster. What we do at Corning is offer products both to the international brands that sell into India, mm -hmm. but the local companies as well, to give them a wide choice, whether they want a premium glass on a high-end phone or a more economically uh, price cover glass to allow an entry phone. We want to make sure we're enabling the consumer to have a choice which device they want. We also have a very strong local workforce. We believe that you shouldn't send expats over to, to participate in a country, so we have strong Indian managers, leaders on the ground. We've actually invested in a fiber plant in Pune uh, several years ago to support the Indian market. So we are right there beside India as they grow going forward. Do you believe that given the, the rapid changes that we are seeing in technology, especially on, on the work that you're doing, that we are going to be able to drive down prices further and, and make, uh, make a smartphone much more accessible? I believe so. I'm, entry level phones now are four or 5,000 rupees at the low end, so we're getting there. Typically in mobile consumer electronics, if you look at TVs or devices through the years, they start high priced and then those innovations go through the learning curve and come down over time. And you think the earliest LCD TVs, several thousand US dollars, now 300 US dollars. And we've seen that in the smartphone as well, that the phones typically had one camera, then two, then yeah. three, then four, then five. And you're seeing some of those features in the intermediate segment and the value. So things just get cheaper over time. So we're always looking to improve our operating efficiencies so we can support that, but also innovating at the high end with new features as well. So once again, the premium phones have their solution space to enable the most advanced phones, but also some of those advancements that were new a couple years ago permeate down in the lower segment. So we want to offer that broad continuum. And a great example of a recent innovation is on the phone on the camera lens cover. Mm -hmm. So everybody wants to take that amazing picture. You want uh, your camera, there's, there's a piece of glass or material that protects that camera, to have high transmission and low, ref re low reflection. We've actually uh, developed a composite material, which is glass with a coating on it, to tremendously increase the, the transmission. Now, a consumer would never know that, yeah. but what they are going to notice is the phone has taken killer pictures and they <laughs> love it. So that's an example of another innovation that's starting on premium phones now, but will eventually be in intermediate phones and probably value phones. The government has sort of put out this production-linked incentive scheme with the idea of championing domestic companies as well. Uh, and it's just gotten started. Uh, but do you see that as being a big area of opportunity for you? I hope so. I hope so. You know, ideally, you need, you need strong uh, demand within the country, right? So if, as India invests in these different industries and if they're relevant to Corning, at the appropriate time, we would love to invest in India. What we can't do is invest before the ecosystem is developed because then it would be higher cost material and would actually have the exact opposite effect, which would drive higher prices and lower demand. So as ecosystems, whether it's semiconductor or display or other industries develop in India, Corning will certainly be looking to invest at the appropriate time in India to be local. So what's next now as far as the evolution of the microchip to fingertip story is concerned? Well, it's for us, smartphones have been about 1.4 billion units for the last six or seven years. So we can't rely on just market growth. Mm. What we rely on is more corning. So we innovate. So seven or eight years ago, there may have been a single piece of corning glass on the front of a phone. Well, now there's glass in the front and glass in the back. This glass can be shaped. It can have optical treatments to make it low reflection, high transmission, talked about the camera lens cover opportunity, the uh, enabling the microchips inside, inside the phone. So for us, we've been able to grow not only with organic market growth, but a more corning story. And this is true in multiple of our markets. That the, the car is a great example. That $15 to $100, that's a more corning story. It's not you know, growing with, with automobiles, it's more corning in the automobiles. That's really where a lot of our growth is coming from. If you were to look at your dashboard, what are the key risks that you're going to be red flagging at this point in time? Well, supply chain, making sure we have access to critical materials and can ship our products. So supply chain has become a, a core competency, actually a strategic advantage for companies. We have a very strong supply chain organization and we're looking to help shape the supply chain as opposed to react to it. So that's a big piece. Second so what is, do you do there to de-risk yourself even further? 
Well, you qualify multiple suppliers, you restructure your contracts, you make, you sh make sure you have access to critical components, and you want to do that in advance of your competition. So it really is a core competency that has to be developed to be competitive going mm -hmm. forward. So there's a supply chain dynamic. I also think continuing to invest even in periods of volatility is critical. Corning has done this through our history, and we've made some of our biggest investments when either external environment or even within Corning, we've been going through challenges. A great example is in the early 2000s, there was a meltdown in telecom, and this fiber I talked about before was our primary growth business. Well, while the world was imploding with telecom in the, in the uh, early 2000s, LCDs were just starting to take off. And at the time, we were trying to be very careful how much we invested, but we invested heavily in liquid crystal display glass at a time when our primary business was going through a difficult time. So then when LCDs took off, Corning was very well positioned to capture that growth, and it's been a tremendously successful business for us. So I think that mindset that you have to continue to invest in difficult times and good times is important. Some companies forget that. They, mm. they pull back too much, they get nervous, they get scared, and then they're not prepared when the growth cycle hits, and that's never been an issue for corn. Are you feeling nervous, though, given the external environment at this point in time, or do you believe that this is an av you know this is this is probably short-term pain, but uh, demand continues to look strong, at least for now? Corning tends to overperform during difficult times, and we've had internal conversations why that is. We have very strong leadership. Our workforce is unbelievable. During the pandemic, we kept all of our factories running except for short periods of production shifts, but. Um, we have 76 factories throughout the world. We kept them all running to make sure we could support our customers. So our workforce is committed. We have a very strong culture, strong leadership. Our strategy is clear. So typically, even when times are difficult, we just, we just stay right down the middle of the fairway, knowing how we innovate, what's important. We deal with the external shocks. We have strong balance sheet to withstand those, those shocks. And that's why typically coming out of difficult volatile cycles were very well positioned. You know, if you could if you could distill for me the playbook, especially on the operations front, for ensuring uh, that you actually do see the daily improvements, that you actually do invest for the future, even during difficult times and volatile times, to ensure that you do have the first mover advantage. I mean, give me an example of, of, of how you've been able to do that consistently year after year. Well, Corning, you know, the optical fiber, for example, we made billions of kilometers of it. So we tend to make very difficult materials on proprietary platforms and run them extremely well. There's a high level of rigor and discipline expected in our manufacturing operations. And we can use lessons in our fiber business into our display business, where we're going from making uh, optical fiber that looks like a human hair to sheets of glass that are three meters by three meters. So it's that uh, discipline and rigor. Also, Corning's superpower is retention. A lot of our employees have 20, 25, 30 plus years with the company. So we've seen volatility before. We've seen boom bust cycles. And we take those lessons and the lessons from innovation where you often fail before you succeed. And we embed that in our leadership and in our workforce. So we don't panic when we see these volatile cycles. And once again, we go back to our core, we stay focused. We use that discipline and operations. We continue to invest, we continue to apply our strategy. And that formula has worked. And it's really from our CEO, Wendell Weeks, all the way down to the factory floor. That culture is very consistent. And uh, it's, I think it's really a competitive advantage for Corning. Has it been hard, though, to keep the culture going through the pandemic, especially over very, Zoom? Yes, <laughs> very good question. So, you know, Zoom, it's hard to build culture on Zoom. So we were certainly cognizant of what employees were going through the very difficult times. People had sick family members, had uh, aging parents or children they had to be home to care for when schools were closed. So we were very flexible with workforce, and if somebody had to be home and work from home, that was fine. Uh, we encourage people at the appropriate time to be back in the office because that is where a lot of the innovation occurs, a lot of the culture is built. So we've tried to strike the right balance between being very cognizant of what people are going through, but also making sure that the culture of Corning was being sustained. And this wasn't only for the workforce, but also with the customers, because Corning, we're not a transactional company. We are not at our best when somebody sends a purchase order over the wall and says, hey, just quote this glass, send us a price. We're at our best when we collaborate deeply, technically, with our customers. We want to understand what do they want their products to do in the future, and how can glass enable their products to be the very best. And when we go deep with customers, that's where we do our best work in display, in Gorilla Glass, and optical fiber. In our life science business, we haven't talked about this, but we developed a new uh, product for vials mm. that is used vaccine by some wise, of the biggest yeah. vaccine 
comp uh, medical companies delivering the vaccines. That's been a very positive story for us during the pandemic, helping people in time of crisis, the health crisis. Mm. So, so what to your mind, and you know, I'm asking people that I meet this question, so let me ask you as well, what is the new normal likely to be? What do you imagine that to be, uh, both in terms of workforce as well as in terms of workflow, in light of the challenges that we're currently dealing with, but also the lessons of, of, of the pandemic? Um, I can answer that on behalf of, of Corning. So I think the new normal will be some level of flexibility, work from home. Um, I don't think 100% work from home is the right I, uh, idea. It may be for some companies, not for Corning. Our culture is too high touch. We have to be in front of customers and you have to be in a lab developing, innovating, building things. But there may be some flexibility. I'd be surprised if there weren't in the future for people's individual situations and kind of the new expectations for the younger generation coming up in the workforce. But we'll, we'll see how that plays out. And, can't give a, a single answer or say this is the path that will yeah. be. We'll certainly adapt over time, but we'll be certainly be sensitive to the best way to uh, structure our workforce. Well, we wish you all the success and thanks very much, John, for speaking to us today. We look forward to seeing you in India. Uh, thanks very much for joining us on Voices from the Valley. Shireen, always good to see you. Thank you. Good to see you, John. With that, it is time for us to wrap up this edition of Voices from the Valley. We'll see you again shortly. Till then, from all of us here, goodbye. Many thanks for watching.